and in this video I'm going to see if I can make an acceptable gin using just two ingredients. So I'm going to start making this gin with just three ingredients. Hang on a second, you said you needed just two ingredients to make this gin. I think this is clickbait. <coughs> Quick, everybody, run away. Whoa there. <laughs> Hold your horses, little lady. Because what I'm actually talking about here is a sugar wash. And I do need one at the beginning in order to be able to get some alcohol, in order to be able to distill it, in order to make the gin in the first place. But it is one of those very simple sugar washes uh, with just some sugar and a few litres of water and um, also one other uh, ingredient um, that is... Uh, ooh. Hello there, good citizen. Do you need my assistance? Because what I think you need is some turbo yeast. Well, he's got it. That's it. That's what I need. Fantastic. Thank you, Captain Turbo Yeast. We'll get to you in just a second. But first of all, I'll start with five kilos of white sugar, about five litres of boiling hot water, and I'll give this a jolly good stir up to make sure the sugar gets dissolved. I then just top this up with cold water until I get to about 20 litres. I did take a gravity reading which showed 1.092, which if this fully ferments would potentially give me a sugar wash with a 13% ABV. But now it's his time to shine because I need to add in some Indeed I do. So I just chuck it all in and then I'll cover this loosely with the lid and put it in a place where it's roughly around 20 degrees Celsius and then just leave it alone to do its thing. So the clue is in the name when it comes to turbo yeast. And it really didn't take long at all for the turbo yeast to fully ferment that sugar wash. So all I do now is siphon the sugar wash into the still kettle. Now I didn't really technically need to do this, but I thought I'd show you just how much of the fine lees, or the dead yeast, was left behind in the fermenting bucket. And as you can see here, I've now put the still together. I've got the three inch column with the eight bubble plates in it, and also the pre-condenser on the top because the plan here is to remove the four shots and the heads from the wash. As I'm reasonably happy I've done that, I can now switch the still off. All I need to do now is sit back and leave this to cool down. And just to be on the safe side, I'll probably leave this until it gets to around room temperature and then I'll come back and remove all the column off the top of the still. So in the meantime, I'll go off and weigh out my two ingredients of botanicals I'm going to be using for this gin. First up, we have the mighty juniper berry. Gin is not gin without juniper, is it? So I'm going to use around 400 grams, which works out at 20 grams per litre of wash. And the second ingredient I'm going to use is about 100 grams of coriander seeds, which works out at roughly around 5 grams per litre of wash. And now we're back with the lukewarm sugar wash, and all I need to do now is add in the botanicals. I'll cover this over and leave it to macerate for at least 24 hours before I start the distillation run. And now we're back again, and as you can see, the bubble plates, the column, the pre-condenser have all been removed. So I'm basically going to be running this today as a pot still. So let's fire this thing up, and fingers crossed, by the end of the day, I'll have myself 
some gin. So a quick little live update of the run. Um, well, well, it's not live live, but you know. Um, I'm a little over halfway through the run. It's smelling fantastic. Um, and the sun is out and things are starting to look really good. And here I am four hours into the run and I think I'm pretty much at the end of it now. I've got over three litres of product, which is good. I started collecting with that lovely aroma of the juniper berries and then later on into the run, it uh, goes into a sweet stage nearer the end. And then now I'm at uh, a little under 40% ABV and it really doesn't smell or taste of much at all. So I think I'm gonna turn this off now and um, I'll be back in a minute. Right, let's lift the lid on this and have a look at the wash. And uh, yeah, look at this. Very murky and brown now and there. Um, there's a couple of handfuls of the juniper berries still floating around on the top. But uh, pretty much most of them and almost all of the coriander seeds are down at the bottom there. Um, yeah, if I just swirl this around a little bit as well, you can still just about make out uh, all the oils from the botanicals um, on the surface of the wash there. So here we have the product that has come off the still and it's three and a half litres at uh, pretty much 54% ABV. Now the general consensus is you uh, water this down to around 40% ABV and as you can see that is pretty much crystal clear at the moment. So in this Demi John I have two litres and what I'm going to add into this is uh, some of the uh, water I've got which is just um, some uh, still spring water. So it's uh, pretty pure um, and I'm just going to chuck in the correct quantity to make this 40% ABV into this demijohn and I'll see if it goes slightly cloudy with um, the effects of the oils that have come out of the botanicals. So I've got the funnel and I've got my water. So here we go. Let's go and see if it gets cloudy. So there we go. At last, all the bubbles have dissipated. And as you can see, I've ended up with a crystal clear product. So Happy days. I'm going to do the same with this one, make it also 40% ABV. And then we're going to have a tasting of this. Ooh, it's me again. I've just had a quick thought. I've added my still spring water into this and it stayed clear at 40% ABV. And this here is the remainder of the product. So I'm going to add in some tap water into this one to make it 40% and see if it's, this one stays clear. So there's, there's no discrimination either between what's in here, whether it's the tail end of the runner and think, because all I collected went into one demijohn and I just measured out from this one and put it into this demijohn. So let's give it some water, see what happens. Yeah, that's not gone too badly at all. Again, reasonably clear. But I can see a difference in the bottom there. I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but maybe the bottom quarter there is slightly hazy. Hmm, that's quite interesting. Let's give it a quick whiz up. Mm. So there we go. 
I don't know if you can see that, it is absolutely crystal clear again and the, the concentration of uh, the cloudiness, the haziness on the bottom there to do with the, uh, the ores from the botanicals um, has dispersed, it's just been diluted. It, they're still in there obviously but they're just um, bobbing around everywhere in this now. Both of these I'll leave alone for a few days um, and I'll see if the cloudiness does reappear in this one. Um, but anyway, even if it does, I'll still bottle these up and then mm, we'll have ourselves a tasting. And there it is. What I'm going to do now, before you all switch off and run away, is um, a very quick taste test and sniff test because this is the two ingredient gin and we're not going to split hairs here, are we? Um, because yeah, there was more than two ingredients, wasn't there? But two botanicals in this one. And I'm happy to say that after leaving uh, the gin for a couple of days, that it didn't revert to any kind of cloudiness or haziness in the demijohn whatsoever. And this one here is the one I made um, four or five months ago, I think. And this one has got five botanicals in it. Let's see how these two stack up against each other. And, yeah, I can immediately tell this one's different. But what I found before is when I've made infusions and drinks, it's not always how it smells. Excuse me. Ah is uh, how always how it smells is not always how it tastes god i'm slurring my words on i haven't even drunk anything yet so i'm not going to drink this neat what i'm doing here is just using some indian tonic water in a measured quantity as well um, just so i can have a quick sip of this and that's gone slightly over, has it, or not? That's near as damn it. Like I say, we're not splitting hairs here, are we? Uh, the tonic water, should I say, is just plain and simple. There's nothing added into this because um, you can get flavoured tonic water. It's just got some sweetener in it. Right, there we go. Let's give them a go. The two botanical first. Cheers. Wow. Hey. Oh, yeah. What? Okay, you can tell, probably tell by my reactions that that has worked. Well, I mean, why wouldn't it? The test will be against this one. Okay. Right, the conclusion for me this one smells awful compared to this one on the nose. Taste-wise, I prefer this one, the two botanical one. The botanicals used in this one um, was in my other gin video, which I will drop a link in the description below for that one if you haven't seen it. But yeah. That one smells awful in comparison, and I know it's not aged as much, but it does smell a bit <clears throat> tailsy, as in like old sock syndrome. That's what I would put that down to. And it's not the burnt bitterness of the um, juniper berries, I don't think. Hmm. So, the question was, can I make a passable gin with just two ingredients forward slash two botanicals um well the answer to that my dear friends is yep yeah, you can well i can i'm sure you could as well if you wanted to another test would obviously be somebody else that does drink gin and makes their own conclusion between the two but for me it's worked more than happy with this one <laughs> hey so on that bombshell, thanks ever so much for watching, and until next time, make sure you keep on shining.
Jibby Yep. That's a beauty, that one. All right, there we go. Ooh. Ooh, I forgot. A big thank you as well goes out to Captain Turbo Yeast. Thanks for that, buddy. Good help. Um, and I'm sure I'll be seeing you again sometime soon. Cheers.